So, now that we've got our cruise booked, what do we pack? So, as we said in the intro, now that we've got the cruise booked, Ilana and I want to talk about how do we actually pack for this cruise. So, what do we pack? Well, really good question. It's probably not a matter of what we pack, it's probably a matter of how much we pack. Yes, well, shoes, how many are you taking with you? Well, possibly next time, just to make you happy. I'll go barefoot the entire time, how's that? Yes. <laughs> I always sneak in a pair of shoes that I don't tell you about. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it looks like you're going to take the two cases and I'll have the overnight bag, that's, right? That's it. You'll have the, yep, the yeah, carry-on. Okay. Just for yourself. Correct. <laughs> All right. Seriously, though, what do we pack? Well, I think the first thing that we need to be aware of, of course, is are you flying? So think about being aware of your luggage allowance. I think yep. that's a really important thing. Being on a ship sort of lulls you into a false sense of luggage allowance. Um I think, um, because you can basically really take as much as you like on, as long as it fits into your cabin, particularly your suitcases stowed away um, under the bed or in the cupboard. So um, just be aware, you know, whether you've got 20 kilos of luggage allowance, that that's really what you can take with you. 20 kilos of luggage may just be your shoe allowance. Yeah, probably, and maybe one bottle of wine. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> so, so let's let's break it down. First of all, um, do you stick everything in the ca in the in the luggage, or do you put some of your things into your carry on? Your carry on, of course, you would take your valuables with you if you're travelling with a camera and a, a laptop. Um, your medication really important. Take your carry on taking your carry-on because sometimes you never know whether your luggage is going to end up where it intends to be so just to be sure always put in you know an extra pair of underpants um, so maybe, maybe swap over you take your partner's um, spare pair of clothes and your partner takes your spare pair of clothes just in case but do make sure you have your medications um, on you and, and your valuables with you at all times good idea if you are on a ship where there is an allowance for taking on your own bottles of wine. You may want to pop them into your carry-on as well. Um, of course, if you're travelling uh, by plane on the way, um, you'll need to, of course, remember your uh, your liquids in little clear bottles. So now, uh, carry-on, what you're suggesting is a night's worth of clothes a night's changeover clothes in the in the carry-on? I'd say so. I mean, it all depends how, how big your carry-on is and what, what size you're allowed to take on. Try and cram as much as you can on. You want to wear 10 layers of clothing on the plane <laughs> just to save <laughs> space in your suitcase, by all means. <laughs> it's your, your, your personal choice. What about, um, say, paperwork? Well, oh, God, don't forget your paperwork, your passport your appropriate visas if you need your visas. Always, of course, take do a photocopy and keep them in your suitcase. Your travel insurance documents, do always do a photocopy. Keep a copy with your family back at home. Your itinerary, do a photocopy and keep that back at home as well because you never know, you may be separated from them. So it's always a good idea to have copies of all your documentation on you. Would you have that in, say, a hard copy or would you just have it on your phone? Uh, you could do either really, one of each if you need to, take a photo and have it on your phone. Um, just make sure that your phone is with you at all times. I, you don't want your phone disappearing. Yeah, I, I was a, of the opinion that um, it'd be good to get one of those uh, folders that you could slide stuff into and just keep all your documentation together. Mm. And you can keep it once you're on, on the ship, you can put it in your safe in the cabin. Don't forget of course that it's there when you leave the cabin at the end. At sad time when you have to disembark, make sure that you really go through carefully for safe. Yeah, I, I, I kind of 
look at the disembarkation time as mixed emotions, joy and a bit of sadness. Oh, that the, night, that in the evening when you go past and you see all the suitcases lined up outside the door, you know. Oh, God, back to reality. Yeah, well, the waiter doesn't bring my breakfast in bed. No, we've, no. St we've still got our room service <laughs> breakfast order hanging on our bedroom door. Yeah. But then again, you can think about the next cruise and start packing for oh, the next one. We can. Here's dreaming. Yeah, well, where is yes. it? Alaska and yeah. Caribbean mm, and that would be nice. That would be nice. Mediterranean. We do have one booked that we're looking forward to, but yes, well. later on. All right. So what are the things that we need? How much underwear would you take? In a, if you're going, say, on a seven-day... If you say you're going on a seven-day cruise, how much stuff, or or even say a fourteen-day cruise, how much clothing would you take with you? Well, of course, it, it very much depends on your itinerary. Where are you going? What is the weather, the climate going to be like? Make sure, of course, this relates to what we talked about last time: is doing your homework and research. Um, whether you're going in the wet season, are you going to the tropics in monsoon season, are you in hurricane season, are you going up to Alaska in the middle of winter. So just really be aware of um, what, you, what the expectations are of weather and take appropriate clothing. Some of the other groups that I've been listening to have been saying um, that lay out whatever you want, look at it and then colour it in half. Yep then look at it and colour it in half again. Mm. So in other words, trying to do a seven-day cruise using an, an overnight carry-on. That might be great for some. <laughs> <laughs> that would kill me personally because you know what I'm like. I start packing, you know, 12, 12 months beforehand. <laughs> I think I think we're already, <laughs> we were two years out from our life, from between cruises and we were already three-quarters packed. We had the suitcases out. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Yeah, they're Putting still out. Yep. Yeah, I Ready keep for the next one. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, look, really, whatever works for you. But you have to think about who's carrying it. Where's it going to be? And who's going to run it, right? That's it. Okay. Okay, so now that we've, um, we're talking about packing, I've, I've actually had a look on some other sites and they've been talking about um, packing cubes mm -hmm. and I think from my disorganized mind uh, using packing cubes would be a good way of packing your clothes and so forth what do you think well we intend next time to use them we do um, we're, we're investigating and um, buying cassette each um, people seem to rave about them how neatly things are kept your clothing is kept um, you just simply take them out of the case and they can go straight into the drawer or the wardrobe in your cabins. Um, everything's nice and neat and sort of vacuum packed and you can fit far more in. So the way people rave about them is probably the way to go. But again, if you've got an, your, your, your own way of packing, rolling, folding. You don't like my way of packing. No, I'm one of these. I'm, I'm, I'm a little bit, um, what's the word, a bit, a bit anal about certain things. Um, a touch. So um, like sometimes might this much for and, me and, and that much for Eli. <laughs> That's the way it is in our wardrobe. So. That's the way it is in the suitcase. Yes. Sorry, um, yeah. <laughs> oh, Excellent. Yeah. It shows how much how loved I am, right? Well, anyway, yeah, we are we <laughs> we are going to try packing cubes next time. We'll let you know. So let us know, by the way, in comments on our Facebook page in any of your packing tips. We'd love to hear from you. More, Far more experienced cruisers than us. Let us know what works for you. And that's a good point, the Facebook page. Um, for those that are not aware, the Facebook page is, or rather this is an extension of the Facebook page, the Down Under Cruisers. So our uh, the Down Under Cruisers YouTube channel is an extension of that. So... Happy for you to give us any feedback, and if you like what you see, click the subscribe button and also give us a like. Um, and if you want us to continue to give you bits of information on a regular basis, hit the bell button. Now, we get down to those nitty-gritty stuff, you know, the toiletries and the millions and millions of packets of makeup for you ladies. 
And the problem is... <laughs> <laughs> the problem is, where do we pack it now? Oh, I've seen many, many different ideas. We, you and I, we just take our own little toiletry bag each that folds out with a little with a little hanger to put on the back of the door. But we've seen other interesting ideas like um, a portable shoe shoe holder that people put hang up on the back of the bathroom door where you slot in lots of different things. Look, for longer cruises, that's probably a really good thing that the bathrooms are very small on, on most cabins um, and, and space is limited. So anything that's not on counters and desks and bedside tables is always a good thing. And by the way, for those who don't know, uh, most cruise lines provide shampoo, conditioner and body wash. Often there are tubes of body lotion as well in your staterooms, in your cabins. And if you're at elite levels, um, often there are bigger perks too with little special special toiletry items as well. Uh, you'll find hair dryers in your stateroom. Look, from what so far what we've found is, well, look at Sean, he doesn't need one at all. You beat me to it. <laughs> um, <clears throat> but for women, with particularly with longer, thicker hair, they're not fabulous. Um, from a personal point of view, I don't find them great, so you may wish to take your own travel uh, hair dryer. You are allowed to take hair straighteners. Just remember to turn them off, of course, and put them on a heat-proof um, cloth that often comes with them. And just be aware of your voltage as well, otherwise they're not going to work as, as effectively. Bear in mind a lot of the ships do operate at 110 um, volts as opposed to 240 volts, which is what we're used to. Mm. Um, the other thing is if you're going to take anything like a, um, a power board, Make sure that it is not one of those that is, uh, what do they call it? Um, a a, 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 one that's got surge protection on. You're not allowed to take mm -hmm. anything surge protected because um, it can cause fires on board ship. So those, those would be interesting. What about magnets? What do you think about magnets? Well, it was a bit of a surprise to us when we went on our first cruise that all the walls and the ceilings are um, metal so you can hang magnets on the walls and the ceilings. We didn't know that the first time. Um, and after that, we did learn and bought um, clips, magnetic um, clips and hooks with us. So we could, you know, put the, 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 the daily newsletter up and hang up things. Um, it was interesting viewing one day. I had um, a sarong hanging up and it was particularly um, rocky that day. And the sarong was swinging we were just in watching the it swinging in our stateroom because it was quite rough that day. So it sort of was quite hypnotising, actually. Um, so, yes, you can hang your washing. You can bring a, a, a portable little peg, peg thing that you can put your smalls on in your socks um, and hang them up. Um, the showers do have lines, little clothing lines, zip lines across to put your things on. Um, not a lot of space. You can bring blow-up hangers. Um, but... Hangers are supplied in cupboards, in wardrobes. You can always ask your, your cabin steward for more if you need more. Now we get to the important stuff, medication and CPAP machines. Okay, well, don't forget your medications, really important. If you've got them, you need them. Make sure you take enough for your cruise, plus a bit controversial and very relevant today is the fact that... Uh, some people have ended up having extending their stay most unexpectedly on a ship for an extra 14 days or more, um, being quarantined. So uh, I've been reading actually just recently that a lot of travel agents are now suggesting that you take an extra two to three weeks of medications just in case it happens to you on your cruise. So a good idea would be to take uh, an extra script with you and maybe a letter from your doctor as well um, outlining why you need these particular medications just in case when you're in a foreign country might, that might be really important now, and, and also seasickness well we're lucky we don't suffer from seasickness but many people do so 
tr maybe try something before you go. There are a wide range of different seasick remedies, possibly old wives' tales, but take you know your band or your medication. People say ginger. Some people say green apple skin. I believe there's an injection you can get on, on board ship that helps you out with that too. Okay. If you want to take a trip down to the, medi the medical centre on the ship, uh, do so. Be aware that that will cost you uh, probably more than you might be want to pay. So. Um, and I would also suggest take a first aid kit with you as well. Yep. Take um, a small one. Yep. Good you, know, idea. you can get a small $10 first aid kit which would have serve you right for a trip mm -hmm. um, and I reckon that would be good. By the way, do the first aid course beforehand so you know how to use the kit. Uh, that would be suggested. <laughs> what have we uh, What have we forgotten? Oh, I just thought of a few things actually. Okay, sunscreen. Oh yeah. Mosquito repellent, really important for the tropics. Hat? Hat, absolutely. He doesn't want to get his head burnt. Okay. Sunglasses, really important as well. Hat and sunnies. Yep, skitter repellent sunscreen. Do you have a checklist? Well, we've pretty much, I think, gone through most of our things. Medication we've talked about. Um, camera or oh, um, adapters for your for your your electrical equipment. Okay. Yeah. Just remember where we're in Australia. Most ships have um, um, American, or American. American and European um, PowerPoints. So take a travel adapter with multi, multi um, connections. connections. Yep, and, and a couple of extra USB ports in them too. That would be really handy. Take books if you want to read or a Kindle. Save, save space in your suitcase. Oh, uh, is there a formal night on board? Are you going to be participating in the formal night? That's entirely your choice. If so, you might need a suit bag to pop your suit in. Ladies, you might need a couple of extra special outfits and, of course, a couple pair of shoes, One's or not two good or three, and some accessories. Are there theme nights on board? A lot of ships do have theme nights, usually like a tropical island party, country and western. Uh, there might be a white night party. Um, so just be prepared for that. Um, you might want to have with your camera or your iPad a larger memory um, card so that you can offload from your camera each day in onto a larger card and that clears your camera and you're ready to go the next day. Make sure, but you'll need a charger of course. You don't want to um, be really excited getting off the ship for your new excursion or your new port and find that you've got no battery left in your camera. If you're planning snorkeling or swimming is your camera waterproof oh yeah um either a waterproof camera or one of those sealable waterproof bags they're fabulous and they do work because we got one for our last cruise when we went to the, went to the south pacific and we had a waterproof camera but um because we were both swimming at the same time we didn't want to leave our things um, on the beach so we put into a little waterproof pouch and we had our passport and we, had, we did test it in the bath before we left several times um, and um, we found that was actually one of the best purchases we, we actually made and took with us. Anything else you can think of? Um, you might want to take a, whether you want to take a bum bag or some mm. sort of security bag to put your valuables in, your credit card if you want to um, off board, go off board or your foreign currency or whatever currency you're, you're choosing to use or your credit card. Um, if you're taking your passport, then you may, you want to make sure that it is safe and secure with you. So you might want to have a special little travel pouch under your clothing. Uh, don't forget that. I I um I generally take a little backpack that I use as my carry on, and when it, when I'm not using it as a carry on, I'll use that as stuff to carry the 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 suntan lotion and uh, maybe a, a jumper or whatever else in there. So, yeah, that's well worth um, thinking about as well. Even a lightweight raincoat because, yep. you know, you can't be guaranteed that it's going to be sunshine all the time or, or a poncho with a hood, something that's light and easy to pop in, into your backpack or your, or your, your bag. So if there's anything we've forgotten, 
please put it onto our Facebook page or even comment on at the bottom of here on, on this YouTube channel. And um, let's hope that we catch you around on the cruise at your next cruise vacation. Happy cruising. Happy cruising.